Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now in today's video we're going to take a look at the astrology for the month of January 2021. If you don't know your sidereal moon sign or your sidereal ascendant sign then I recommend you click on the link below in the description and find out what that is and you can watch your mini reports from both perspectives. It'll give you a really nice well-rounded view of the month for you personally. But before we dive into those I'm going to take a look at the astrology for the month overall and we're going to see you know what are the key things that are happening uh, the first one of course being the 31st of December Pluto moves into Capricorn and the last time that happened was 1773 so this is going to be a really big movement in our sky uh, I've done reports about this so if you have a look at the channel if you click on videos and have a look at the recent transit videos I've done you'll be able to see how this movement affects you personally so do take a look at that on the channel I've also spoken in the past about the Karl Sarpa yoga that's forming in the sky so that's an arrangement of planets in the sky we've got Rahu Ketu axis right Rahu Ketu are here and all planets are going to be on one side of these two points so that's quite incredible and that's going to be in the sky uh, now I think in my report earlier I said at the start of the year till about I think it was March April if I've got that right off the top of my head but here I've got the date 11th Jan 2021 is really the date when it begins with the moon included okay sometimes I don't count the moon uh, because the moon you know it's got a very uh, fast movement I, I, and it's small I don't tend to count it in the Karl Sarpa necessarily but the moon will be in there so everything will be in those two points from 11th Jan onwards okay so Karl Sarpa has been known to favor certain people with that in their chart I've definitely seen that and spoken about that on the channel as well what else do we have happening well on the 6th of January there's going to be a massive gathering in Washington DC and I had a look at the astrology for that date it looks like moon is in Hasta Nakshatra I thought that was kind of interesting I wondered you know is the hand of God gonna do something at this time uh, in favor of justice in favor of preserving America's integrity the integrity of the election system in America I think that is definitely going to be a key focus for the month and it's so important that elections in America are fair and just and true and have no corruption and I really firmly believe in that I've been uh, doing a lot of research on this topic and watching documentaries I'm going to point you below to a documentary that has been beautifully put together it's called who's stealing America you can click on that and, and watch it see what you think you know um, do your own research and, and see what you find but from what I've found out there are something like 52,000 affidavits 52,000 Americans have spoken have you know found the courage within themselves to speak and to say you know when I was at the center this happened and, and that happened and this wasn't right and I saw this and I captured this video on my phone I saw a video by a lady called Susan Knox she videoed a shredding truck that was outside one of the centers and basically there were these bins full of paper going into this shredding truck I don't know what those pieces of paper were she I think was she an employee of the um, or was she working as a part of the election team I'm not a hundred percent sure there was nobody in sight except for her so she had some kind of privileged access to be there to be behind the center and to be filming this truck anyway she calls I think the police on her phone she recorded the call and she's saying look there's a shredding truck outside of the voting center I'm really concerned could you please send a policeman here I really want you to send a policeman nobody came nobody turned up but you know to me that's a piece of evidence right 
she's not making it up. She was genuinely there. And, and look, it doesn't matter whose votes were being, and, and were they votes that were being shredded? I don't know, right? Maybe they weren't. Maybe votes weren't being shredded. But what if they were? And does it matter if they were votes for one side or votes for another side? It doesn't matter, right? The fact is that um, there's massive fraud and corruption within the system, whether it be by paper ballots, um, you know, so much evidence about thousands of paper ballots, no fold marks, printer ink, right? That's a problem. Uh, the design of the software, so we've got the um, Dominion servers and Smartmatic software, I believe. Now, the software allows you to skew percentages. Why is that function even there? Why is it programmed in? Why, why does it exist? You know, there are so many things, and, and that's just, I've just plucked out a few things from what I watched. Who are these people that I've been watching? I've been trying to watch as much real raw data as possible. So I've been watching court cases. As I mentioned, I watched the iPhone footage by Susan Knox, who is a regular person. So what is she not? Okay, she's not a journalist. And I've written all this down here, a list of what she's not. She's not a journalist. She's not a YouTuber. She's not a conspiracy theorist. She's not a politician. She's not a leader. She's not an influencer, not a preacher, not a role model, right? She's none of that. She's a regular everyday person. And I really like to listen to everyday regular people who are just, you know, sharing, well, this is, this is what I observed. And, you know, um, it's, it's, it's very much gone beyond, uh, you know, who these votes are for. The fact is that the election system is um, extremely corrupt and uh, this, is, this is terrible. So I'm really hoping for justice. I'm hoping that America can preserve election integrity and all the good, beautiful values and wonderful things that make America such a great place. I really hope that that stays you know, and that's really what people need to be fighting for. So 6th of January, there's this gathering in the DC area, you know, it seems like uh, that's gonna be quite an important date. So as I say, moon in Hasta Nakshatra, is the hand of God gonna come in and, and help bring justice to a nation that really needs it at the moment? 20th January, we've got Mars could be conjunct Uranus, it, well, not could be conjunct, it will be conjunct, my apologies. Uh, and Mars will be conjunct. Uranus almost exactly, square, Saturn. Could this be a massive change of events? Could, could there be a massive change that takes place? Um, that's the question that I'm definitely asking there. I've got a note here, people on both sides are saying that each side is going to hold a virtual inauguration. Okay, that's really weird. <laughs> I heard that, I've heard that from both sides, each side claiming that the other side is going to um, fake an inauguration. My goodness, I mean, is that what this 20th January thing is about? You know, this Mars conjunct Uranus thing? Something uh, illusory, some illusion going on here. Well, where's Neptune, I wonder? Well, I know that we've got, so we've got Mars that's going to just, and I'm just clicking up on my system now, we've got Mars that's going to conjunct Uranus. And those two are basically square to Saturn. So, I mean, the materialization of a 180 in terms of events, that, that is very possible. We have a Carl Sarpa in the sky, moon included. I mean, I do feel like something, something's got to give, something's got to change. We've also got Neptune kind of squaring the Rahu Ketu axis here as well. So Neptune is confusion, it's illusion, it's fog, it's, you know, we don't know what's going on. So how is this going to play out? I will be watching very keenly. Uh, believe me, I've been spending a lot of time watching a lot of whatever I can find to try and get a real feel for what is going on. And as I say, I'm not tuning into uh, too many people who may manipulate information. I'm trying as much as possible to tune into raw information wherever I can. Raw data is definitely the thing that we want. 
here when it comes to the American election. Let's not be led or, or manipulated. I think that's so important. And I have a quote that I'm going to share with you. It's, it's a rather long quote, but I, I like it because it beautifully explains. And this is from the documentary that did I mention that documentary, Who's Stealing America? It's in the description links below. So do take a look if you happen to have time and you would like to watch that. It's really interesting viewing. It's something to just watch with an open mind and see, see what you think, you know. Um, and of course, there might be other alternative views on all of that. But there's a quote from there that I pulled out because when I heard this, and it's the, I think it's Kiwi guy at the end of the documentary, he says all of this. Now, I haven't had time to look him up and what his credentials are because I've just been really busy, guys, but um, I would have done that. But the words that he speaks are brilliant because he's talking about the rule of law and how that protects individual people. And I think in the December outlook, I had said that Jupiter is going to be debilitated. And does that mean that legal protections are weak and therefore, you know, rich elite people won't have their usual legal mechanisms to be able to go to in order to protect themselves? Because I was thinking, well, are these people going to come down? But after watching this documentary, I started to think about Jupiter's debilitation in terms of we the people. How is that going to affect everyday people? I didn't think about that before. But this guy's quote made me really think about this. So I'm going to read it out to you. So this is kind of in relation to Jupiter debilitated, which I said, and I have said on the channel, that when Jupiter's debilitated, legal protection will be weakened. Okay, so all right, yeah, it could mean something for the elite people at the top. Sure. What does it mean for us? What does it mean for us everyday people? Well, in the documentary, this gentleman says, and I'll quote every single word, I'm just going to read it out. He says, in a socialist communist society, there is no rule of law. There is only the rule of the state. So in America, you are protected by law. You can criticize the American president. You can criticize your congressman. He can't touch you because you have the First Amendment right to speak your mind. You have all sorts of legal protections. Under socialism, the only authority is the state. The only right or wrong is what the state wants. So if you're in any way opposed to the state's plans or you don't cooperate with the state's plans, you are an enemy of the people and you have no legal protection whatsoever, right? No legal protection whatsoever. What's that? Jupiter debilitated, right? They can jail you. They can persecute you. They can take your job away. They can stop your kids going to school. They can deny you health care. They can do anything they want to you. And Americans need to understand that the goal of the socialists in this country is complete tyranny. So maybe he meant the goal of some of the socialists in this country. I'm not sure, but I mean, you've got to watch the documentary, okay? So I quoted that. I took that out from that documentary. If you watch the whole documentary, you know, you'll be able to see more. I found it a really interesting thing to watch. And the closest thing to old school journalism, the kind of journalism that I haven't seen in a while. I remember in the 80s, you know, journalism was pretty good back then. Uh, people did their research, people did their work, people interviewed, you know, people and um, investigated and found things out and discovered. And to me, this documentary had that feel to it. You can have a look, you can see for yourself what you think, but that's yeah, what I found out there. Let's see, 15 minutes. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on. We're going to take a look at the Dutch election. I'm going to put on the screen the question asked by one of you out there. Thank you so much for asking me about this. I've taken a look and this is for Wednesday the 17th of March 2021. So this is the House of Representatives of the Netherlands. Guys, I know nothing about the politics of your land. I really know nothing at all. I'm coming to this completely blind and fresh and pure mind don't know anything 
the only thing I know um, about uh, that part of the world is I, I'm quite a fan of, well, Mary Donaldson, obviously, the Aussie lady who married into uh, the Dutch royal family, I believe. So I know all about her and through her, I've learned all about your queen, is it Queen Margaret? I hope I'm saying that right. So I know a bit about all of that kind of thing. And I've watched documentaries about the Danish jewels, which I think that like, and I don't know why I've watched all of this, but I just have, because apparently, like if you study jewelry, it's quite a good way of learning about history because you get to find out who married who and who gave what to her. Anyway, it's all very interesting to me. Like I will never, you know, see or even touch any such thing or you know get anywhere close to anything like that but um i like to study those things and look i'm not even i'm like russell brand i think you know we shouldn't have um royalty like he, he says stuff like well the queen could just sell like one rock in her crown and we could feed all these homeless people that makes sense to me right that is totally what makes sense to me but i can appreciate you know um what those things are you know it's cognitive dissonance isn't it i can i can appreciate and like all of that stuff but at the same time want to abolish it and bring equality to everyone and all that kind of thing okay so let's take a look at the dutch election we've got two people that i found so we've got mark root so is that right so i'm guys i'm going to be disclaimering this so much because i don't know these people and I, you know please go easy on me in the comments and in fact in the comments what i would love is i'd love your opinions and your thoughts and feelings on all of this because me i've just been researching this i spent about half an hour yesterday and probably about half an hour today on this i i found the details of mark root and geert wilders and with mark root we've actually got his and i'm going to call him mark because i think i'm saying his name wrong or something like that so mark um his details we have his full time date of birth everything so I've got him in the system I can see him Geert Wilders unfortunately I I don't have his time of birth so with him I'm kind of just looking at the moon chart that's the best I'm going to be able to do and I haven't written any notes what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this live and I'm going to put diagrams by my side so that you'll be able to see what I'm looking at so I'm going to bring up okay so the first person I'm going to bring up is Mark Let's take a look at Mark. Now, first thing, when I take a look at his chart, I definitely see the chart of a leader, right? I like this chart. I like this chart a lot for a leader. I, I think it's got a lot of terrific things. First thing I really like is I like the um, Mars Ketu there in the, um, well, that's in the third house there, isn't it? I mean, that's fantastic. So here's a person who's skilled at battle, right? He's skilled, he knows, he knows when to fight. He knows that you better save your energy. You know, 99% of the battles aren't worth fighting. 1% of the battles are worth fighting. So, you know, he knows um, when to fight and he'll probably be quite good. I've seen this in the charts of lawyers. I know that the lawyer that worked for Michael Jackson, uh, for example, he's got one of these Mars Ketu. I've, I've seen this. I like this placement. He's got an exalted Jupiter there. I think that's quite fantastic. What else have we got here? Well, there's a Rahu moon. I mean, wow. Okay, so that's like a sort of, um, that's terrific. And all this, uh, there's Satta Bishak, there's Aquarian energy here. So this is quite a humanitarian as well. I like this person for a leader. Also, we've got Ascendant Magha Nakshatra, Leo. Yes, I, there's a lot here that I like. Um, now, Geert, on the other hand, let's just take a quick look at his chart. And I can see the, the uh, yes, he's got this kind of, I can see that he'd be a businessman for sure, that Mercury there exalted uh, in, in Hasta. So this is a man who knows how to, to play the markets. We've also got some good Leo energy here. So some of the things that this guy's reminding me of, there's a businessman that I know personally who has... Let me have a look at this, Mars. No, he hasn't got that. I'm just thinking there's a, there's a businessman that I know personally who's done really, really well on the stock market. The charts are similar. Uh, 
in terms of is this a, a great leader it's a good chart it's a good chart but I actually prefer Mark Mark's chart um, for leadership now let's take a look at transits what's happening so when we're looking at March what did I say March 17th let's take a look at March 17th oh my system shut down okay so I've got the transit wheel up for both of these guys and what I'm going to do is I'm just really going to read my favorite technique which is the most reliable of all techniques and that is Saturn moon uh, Saturn moon is indicating so for Mark and how how I see this is I think Mark will retain the leadership why we've got um, Saturn six from the ascendant so this is fantastic I feel like he should be able to combat uh, any enemies at this time I do think though that last year I could imagine that Mark had a tough time politically and, and please do let me know in the comments below what what you've seen and what you know because I don't know these people and I don't know anything at all like I'm so new to this so I'm just saying what I see here but I see that Mark would have had a tough year last year I think he would have been grilled a lot because he's got Saturn 10th from the moon so I think last year would have been extremely difficult but he's, his Saturn is 6 from the ascendant and I feel like that should be enough to help him combat enemies or competition I feel like that that should be strong enough uh, and also when you look at lordships and things like that I, I'm, I'm happy with that now if I look at Geert for example I do think that he's going to grow his party a lot I think he's got the potential to to really grow his party in, in an incredible in an incredible way like it but I don't think he's gonna win and the reason I'm saying that I think he's gonna grow the party is because he's got Saturn here uh, let's have a look one two three yeah no that's four no yeah yeah it's good it's so it's Saturn is 11th from the moon great fantastic and I think that that's going to be a real platform building time but he's also got Saturn return so this kind of depends on how he's performed and what he's been like over the last 30 years you know um, Saturn's a karmic accountant if he's been a terrifically honest wonderful great person and it's all you know he's he's really really wonderful and Saturn will be looking to reward him but I think if he's done anything uh, inappropriate or not great or anything like that over the last 30 years um, hi sorry the camera got cut I think I was just saying that if Geert had done anything dishonest or not right over the last 30 years then I mean I think Saturn's going to want to correct that or do something about that I feel like he might be able to grow his party a lot that, that's kind of what I'm seeing but I, I, I don't see that he uh, would win I feel like I feel like Mark has <clears throat> I feel like Mark has the stronger chart and, and the stronger chance at um, at winning my understanding I don't really know either of these people at all all I know is that gear they say that he's like the Donald Trump of the like the Dutch Donald Trump or something like that which is kind of amusing and yeah I mean uh, as I understand I think he wants to take the Netherlands out of the EU is that right have I got that right because I've only just scanned a couple of little articles and I do think that's interesting and I, I can see why one would want to do that uh, I remember in in England when the whole Brexit thing was happening I am a British citizen I became one in 2013 and uh, I was able to vote but I decided not to because my vote I wanted leave that was what I wanted and I um, decided not to vote because uh, everybody around me was a remain person and I thought that my opinion is wrong and you know I, I shouldn't express my opinion what I think is not the right thing and so I didn't vote uh, on that occasion 
And you can imagine I was actually quite pleased when I saw that the, the result was, was for leave. I, I would have been okay if it was remain. I wouldn't have had a problem at all. But for me, I thought that was one of the most democratic things I'd seen. And I know that they were then talking about, oh, we might do the vote again, because they were like, British public, you got it wrong. You know, <laughs> let's do it again. One of the things I wanted, I wanted to talk about this because I wanted to say that, look, your vote is a strategic thing, okay? And um, you need to choose and you need to decide, you know, what it is that you want to do. So, and I know it's interesting to try and see this in the astrology, to try and see, all right, who's got the stronger chance? I mean, what I'm seeing, I, I do think that Mark has a better leadership chart. I think he's going to retain his position. From what I know, is it right that he w might resign? Um, and look, he's got... I'll tell you another thing. He's got a terrific two and a half years coming up, uh, starting kind of January, um, sort of Jan, Feb 2023 for 2.5 years. He's got a brilliant transit, whereas Geert doesn't. 2023, Jan 2023 onwards, Geert will be in Sadisati period. So this really does, with Geert, it depends on how good a person has he been. You know, but the reason I brought up the whole Brexit thing was to say that, and 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 the fact that your vote is strategic, right? It, it's it's like a chess move. It's like which piece do you want to put forward and why? And sometimes you're you're you know being open or you're attacking or you're expanding, and sometimes you're blocking or defending, right? And maybe yeah, I mean, Garrett, okay, the chances are slim, but. You know, if, if you feel he's the right one, then that's that's fine. I, I'm not sure what to believe anymore because I know the media, I think, is painting him out to be really racist and this and that. He might not be. I know with the Leave vote in Brexit, I never thought that it was a thing of racism. Uh, I thought it, it was a, a thing of power and democracy. And I thought that, you know... Um, you know, we should be our own country, able to make trade agreements with whoever we want, and the power should be here in Britain. And that was very much what I thought. That that just made sense to me. And it's really interesting. I found out that Clive James, my favourite author, was also a Leave guy. And when I heard that, it just made me so happy. And that's why I'm sharing with you the fact that I'm pro Leave, because sometimes we can be very alone in our um, opinions and in our thoughts and in our beliefs. And, um, you know, if you wanted to vote for Garrett, but the media is telling you that you're being racist or something, well, maybe you're not. Maybe, you know, you've got reasons and as a strategic chess move, you know, you, you want certain things. And um, I think that's perfectly fine. So that's the only reason why I wanted to go down that road and share all of that with you. I don't normally want to, um, I think it's all right to say, you know, where I stand on things when there's no election happening. If there's an election happening, I won't say. I'll try to not say who I think should be the person. But uh, now that all the voting, well, Brexit, you know, no one's voting for that anymore and that's happening, it seems. Um, I feel like it's okay to speak of it. But anyway, that's, yeah. So that was really interesting to look at that. Let me know in the comments below if you're in that region because I know I've got quite a few clients who are from that part of the world. And I'd really love to hear your thoughts, your feelings, your opinions. You know, for me, that's interesting. Whereas with the American election, I'll tell you where I'm confident in my opinion. Well, as you can see, not so confident in Britain. I didn't even vote because I was, uh, yeah, I wasn't confident in my opinion then. I think I am now. I think I am now. I would be confident to, to vote for what I want. Uh, I didn't think it was right in Britain because I wasn't born on British soil. That's another thing I thought. I thought, well, I'm not born here. I haven't spent enough time. Uh, so I decided to stay out of it. But, um, but definitely in the American election this time, I, I've got quite, quite my own opinion and um, from having done a lot of research. So, yeah, that's, that's a place where I, I have an opinion. Whereas here, and, I, and it, with the American one, I don't, I don't want opinions and all that kind of thing. I want raw data, <laughs> right? I don't want people to give me their opinions there. But with the Dutch election, uh, and I've 
just gone through a little bit what I think there astrologically, please do share with me your thoughts, feelings and opinions on what you see there. I would really love to know um, how, how, it, how it really is, what's really the word on the street. You know, who's, who's the more popular person and what's going to happen, I'd, I'd really like to know. All right, so let's take a look at the mini reports, shall we? This is good. Let's get into it. Why not? Come on. We've got to get through quite a few of these. So let's see how we're doing for time. Seven minutes. Oh gosh, I've got to hurry. Um, running out of memory card. Now, for the mini reports this time, I'm not looking at moons or any of that. I might do a little moon report separately this time because I've just I've totally run out of time. I'm only looking at Sun and Venus. If you're one of the lucky ones that's having a great Mars transit, I'm going to talk about Mars. So three of you, I'm going to talk about Mars, but everybody else, we're just talking about Sun and Venus and that's it, because that's where the new news is. Uh, Mercury, I didn't bother with too much. Um, I think Sun and Venus will be good, will give you a, a flavor for how this month is going to be different. So let's take a look at Aries. All right, Aries, welcome Aries. This is Aries Moon or this is Aries Ascendant. You can watch from both. So 4th of January, Venus enters your ninth house. Expect good fortune, a good time in your love life. Uh, this is a great time to focus on studying a subject that's important to you or that's important to your career. Sun in the ninth house can mean challenges at work. However, when Sun enters your 10th house on 14th Jan, this will improve a lot. Yeah, so you, you're definitely gonna have some challenges at work there, but don't, don't worry. 14th Jan onwards, your work scene is going to improve a huge amount. You should be able to shine at work. Hopefully you should be recognized, um, given more responsibility, even if there's a promotion that you want to go for. Maybe if there's a job that you want to go for or you want to apply, you want to change, you want to make a change of some kind, um, 14th Jan onwards could be a good time. All right, now we're going to take a look at Taurus. So Taurus Moon or Taurus Ascendant, welcome, welcome to your mini report. So on the 4th of January, Venus enters your 8th house. This is a great time to improve how your finances are structured, especially how joint finances are structured as well, um, or how your finances are working in your life. Maybe there's some admin you might need to do, you might need to do your accounts, you might need to tidy things up. Uh, sun is in your eighth house. This can impact your health. So if you're feeling a bit run down, make sure you rest. Make sure you schedule in rest, okay? Um, that's really, really important. I heard something really interesting today on a human design video. They were saying that um, one of the guys, one of the experts there was saying, I am going to schedule in laptop time. And I thought, oh, that's good. I probably need to do that because yeah, I'm a bit addicted to um, <laughs> watching videos and being on Instagram and like, you know, I don't know, like taking content in. I'm a bit addicted to that. But anyway, um, okay. So sun is in your eighth house. This can impact your health. Yes. Did we say that? Yeah. If you're feeling run down, please rest. On 14th of Jan, sun moves into your ninth house. So get your energy ready to learn new things that will help boost your career, okay? So mid-Jan onwards, this could be a really good time. This could be quite intellectually stimulating. Maybe you'll be able to pick up something new that you can learn. There could be um, power struggles with authority or maybe with your father or something like that, so be careful of that. Uh, expenses could run a bit higher after the 14th of Jan as well, so make sure you keep an eye on all of that too. All right, Taurus, well, thank you for joining. We are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, Gemini Moon, Gemini Ascendant, welcome. Thanks so much for joining. So on 4th of Jan, Venus enters your seventh house. So take it easy in relationships, right? Uh, if you're in a couple, be careful of how you speak to your partner. Take time out if you need to. You know, now's not a time to really be putting your foot on the accelerator when it comes to relationships. Uh, I've got a note here, not a great time to pursue a new relationship either. But that's just a short transit, okay, just this month. So you're going to have much, much better transits coming for love. So sun is in your seventh house. Your energy might be feeling a bit drained. You know, you might be emotionally drained specifically. This might 
continue when sun moves into your eighth house on 14th January. Yeah, health is not the best when sun's in the eighth sometimes. Okay, it just just might tire you out a little bit. Please take time out for your health. Make sure you rest, do light yoga, meditation, that sort of thing. You do have Mars in your 11th house. So if you feel you have the energy to do lots and achieve lots, make it happen. Okay, you are one of the lucky ones. I forgot about that. Mars in the 11th, that's brilliant. It's gonna be a balancing act. See how you go. If you are feeling tired, because let's say you've come out of this you know, 2020 feeling pretty burnt out and run down, you may need to rest if your sun is strong. But if your Mars is strong, oh my gosh, do, do a lot, achieve a lot, take the opportunities, say yes to the clients, build the business, do all of that, okay? You've got a really, really nice Mars transit. Yeah, I've got the note here, just remember sun's placement and that it'll be important to pace yourself as well. All right, Gemini, I'm excited for your month ahead. You've got a great start to the year with that Mars transit, so I wish you well. We are now gonna welcome Cancer. Cancer Moon, Cancer Ascendant, welcome. I'm just taking a look at the time. Uh, so let's take a look at your month ahead. So 4th of January, we've got Venus entering your sixth house. This can be a tough placement. Be careful with how you speak to your partner and be careful with competitors of any kind. It's not a great time for legal cases. So be careful if you're um, doing any of that. Sun is in your sixth house, which is great for your energy. Beautiful, this is a good, good transit. It's actually also great for competing at work, but Sun will move into your seventh house on 14th Jan, which is not so great, okay? So you've got a little bit more good time with the Sun there until 14th of Jan, so make the most of that. In the second half of the month, work will be a major focus. You do have Mars in Aries in the 10th. I like that placement. I think that's a really good, strong placement. So, you know, in the second half of the month, it could be a bit mixed works work wise it could be um i kind of feel like you because you've got a lot of planets there in the seventh house so you're gonna have you might find that it's quite a bit stop start and that you're wanting to do things but saturn's stopping you it could be a little bit stop start with work and career so pace yourself um, is the ultimate note that i've got here cancer but Thank you so much for stopping by. And we're now gonna welcome Leo. So Leo, welcome. Welcome Leo Moon or Leo Ascendant. On the 4th of January, Venus enters your fifth house. So this is a beautiful time to spend with children uh, or time with your romantic partner. It's a great time for romance in general. If you're single, this could be a time to meet someone new. Excellent time to be creative or to put self effort into learning something new. Expanding your intellect is also possible with Mars in the ninth house. So you might be, if you're feeling restless or like you want to do something, definitely do something that's intellectually stimulating or maybe you want to learn something, pick up something new. If you're having issues at work, <clears throat> this could be sun in the fifth house. This will change when sun enters your sixth house. That's a beautiful transit. So that's gonna happen 14th Jan onwards. So that's gonna be a great time to shine at work, to go for promotions, to go for new responsibilities, all that kind of thing. So Leo, I wish you well. And we are now gonna welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. So this is either Virgo moon or Virgo ascendant. So on the 4th of January, Venus enters your fourth house. Oh, this is beautiful. This is a great time to enjoy the comfort of home, to cozy up with good food, good books. Check in with your mum, right? See how your mum's health is and help her if you're close by uh, and you're able to be there with her. Sun moves from your fourth house to the fifth house on 14th Jan. So this is really time to be careful health-wise. If you're feeling a little bit drained, because the sun can drain our energy, um, then make sure you rest. You could have some digestive issues here. Be careful with eating out, okay? I know I need to be careful with eating out. I've eaten out just a couple of times in the last few months and yeah I don't know both times it um, didn't go so well uh, could be some mild challenges at work or with seniors at work yeah definitely so with the sun in that placement there could be some clashes with authority figures that kind of thing but nothing too major so Virgo 
Thank you so much for stopping by and we are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, welcome. We're just checking the time, make sure we're okay. We're not too bad. Uh, Libra, so what do we have going on here? Now this is Libra, Moon or Ascendant, okay? Um, 4th of January, Venus enters your third house. The Sun is there too. So this is a great time to brush up your LinkedIn profile, maybe take a new photo if you feel inspired. Uh, you know, you could get a professional photo done. It's always a thing. When do you get those professional photos taken? Um, I tend to think when you when you feel like you're looking really healthy and, and all that kind of thing. I, I had that done one time, long time ago. And, um, and it's funny, an astrologer said that that would be a good time to do it. And someone handed me a flyer and then I thought, okay, I'll just do it. And I think I had some spots on my face, but the makeup, they covered it up. It was okay. <laughs> anyway, um, let's have a look here now. Great time to expand your networks and to be seen. Okay, this is good. Uh, on the 14th, the sun will move into your fourth house. This could provide some challenges to your peace of mind and or your comfort in general. Yeah, absolutely. Um, be careful of how you speak to your mother. All right. Um, now with the Mars placement, be careful of how you speak to your partner or to your business partners or to your public even if, you, if you've got a public profile or any of that. Um, just be careful. Uh, but it should be a pretty good month on the whole there, Libra. So thank you so much for stopping by. We are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio Moon, Scorpio Ascendant. Welcome. Thank you so much stopping by so on the 4th of Jan we've got Venus moving into your second house if there's been something beautiful and expensive that you'd like to buy and you happen to have spare money then this could be a good time to treat yourself um, I've got the note here don't go into debt because Saturn won't be happy so make sure if you're doing that kind of thing you know you want to treat yourself to something expensive make sure it's it's easy to do um, otherwise you, you know you could buy something cheap and, and that way you'd be using Venus energy and pleasing Saturn, <laughs> right? So when Sun moves into your third house or on the 14th, yeah, when Sun moves into your third house on the 14th, you'll have a lot of starlight power. Absolutely. This is beautiful, guys. Um, Sun's going to encourage you to promote yourself, to be seen, okay? So go for that big job. Go for that promotion. Luck is on your side now. Update your LinkedIn profile, get a professional photo done. You know, you oh look at that. You've even got Mars in the six. This is beautiful. Great time, great energy to win big career-wise. Yes. Tick, tick, tick. Yes, yes, yes. This is the month for you, Scorpio. So uh, I'm wishing you an excellent month ahead. I'm really, really happy that you've got these lovely transits. So do make the most of that. We are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Welcome either Sagittarius Ascendant or Sagittarius Moon. So on the 4th of January, Venus moves into your first house. This is a great time to reinvent your look, try a new hairstyle. Maybe you want to try a new jacket or something, you know, that you've been eyeing out. Uh, you might start a new routine at the gym or on the yoga mat. Time to look good, feel good. You may attract someone special as well. 14th Jan, we've got sun moving into your second house. So be careful about your health. You may notice headaches. Yeah, and that's, um, that's that sun placement there. You know, and that's kind of around the position of the eyes, the head, uh, neck as well even. So, you know, if, if you're feeling tense, that might be where you might store the tension. So rest if you feel tired. Um, also keep an eye on your spending. Be careful not to overspend your long-term wealth. Yeah, this is the thing with the sun here in this placement. Um, sometimes it burns up the money, right? It burns up the cash. So be careful with that. All right, Sagittarius, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn Moon, Capricorn Ascendant. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just taking the time. We're fine. So 4th of January, Venus enters your 12th house. So this is a great time to indulge in escapism, good movies, good books, anything that takes you away from the everyday. Do you know, if I was having this transit, it was something I wanted to watch. I still haven't done it yet because you have to pay like, I think it's like $15 or something, which is not a lot of money, but I just haven't found the time to do it. So what was I going to pay $15 for? It was um, Matthias Di Stefano on Gaia TV. And he goes through like all the different 
alien races and like who they are and you know he, he covers Atlantis and past civilizations and all that I really want to watch that so at some point I'm going to do that I haven't even got this transit but that is what I would be escaping into he's really amazing I just I really like what he has to say because he's very enlightened and evolved and amazing um, I've got the note here, you might find a new spiritual teacher, there we go, Matthias Di Stefano, I recommend him, uh, or revisit an old master. Sun moves into your first house on 14th Jan, so if you're feeling fatigued, if you're feeling tired, please rest, you know, the sun does drain us of energy, um, so be careful with all that. Be mindful in relationships with your partner, with your business partner, with your employees, this isn't a month to put your foot on the accelerator. So Capricorn, I wish you well. Thank you so much for stopping by. We're now going to welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome. We're at the 23 minute mark. It's going to cut out any moment, but that's okay. Um, so Aquarius, Moon, Aquarius Ascendant, 4th Jan, we've got Venus moving into your 11th house. So this is a great time to potentially pay off some debts uh, if you have any. Great time to expand your social or professional networks. Good time to update your LinkedIn profile and share your talents with the world. Mars is, oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Lucky you. Mars is third from your moon. It's probably Mars energy is going to cut us off. No, it doesn't cut us off. Okay. Uh, fantastic way to start the year. Yeah, lucky you. You're one of the three that's having a great Mars transit. Great way to start the year for you. So you've got energy. You've got energy to put into new projects. Now is a time to use your effort to achieve things. What do you want to achieve? What do you want to do? Um, you can make that happen now. So Sun moves to be 11th. Oh no, okay. Sun moves from your 11th house um, to 12th on 14th Jan. Yeah, mid-month onwards, you may be able to expand your spiritual side. Uh, so, but before mid-month, right, that first half of the month, you've got that Sun energy there in the 11th. That's beautiful. You can do a lot with all this. So, um, but mid-month onwards, you know, you might want to indulge in, in, in spirituality, spiritual things. Don't worry if sleep is a problem, okay? You might find that mid-month onwards, sleep becomes a bit difficult. This will pass, all right? So if you're up late at night, what was I saying? Sorry, the camera got cut. If you're up late at night and you find that, you know, you're finding it hard to sleep, read something spiritual. It's a really good time to just kind of... Um, Get into some David Hawkins or, you know, David Hawkins letting go. I can recommend that. Power versus force is very good as well. Power versus force? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's a good one. So maybe you want to read uh, some spiritual texts because they're always good to read really late at night. I find when it's like 3 a.m. or something, that's a great time to pick up um, either really fine poetry or literature or something really spiritual, Course in Miracles, anything by Eckhart Tolle, you know, the masters. Read the really good stuff in those late hours because the vibes are all really quiet and you absorb all of that stuff really well. So, um, yeah, it'd be a good thing to do. All right, well, Aquarius, thank you so much for stopping by. And we are now going to welcome, just checking the time, we're good. <laughs> we are going to welcome. Pisces, Pisces moon, Pisces ascendant. Welcome, thank you so much for joining. Now let's take a look. 4th January, you've got Venus moving into your 10th house. Okay, uh, this is not a great transit when it comes to work for Venus, but this is just your feminine side, yeah, because your sun is fantastically placed for work. So your feminine side is kind of like you should rather be shopping than in the boardroom okay but your son your soul who you are at your core that's ready to work okay you have got great transit when it comes to work sun your soul can shine at work for the, this entire month right through to mid-feb you are a beautiful long thing happening here with the sun uh, so make the most of this energy this is fantastic time to work on projects that you are passionate about and to use your professional and social networks to get your work out to the world. So this is a terrific time for you, Pisces. I've got the note here. Um, it's a great time for you to expand and shine. So Pisces, it's a good start to the year for you. You're one of the lucky ones. You've, in that, you've got a great sun transit. And then, of course, there are those other three signs uh, that are having a great Mars transit as well. So thank you so much 
for stopping by. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for commenting. I love reading all of your comments. Please know that if it takes me a little while to get back to your comment, it's only just because I'm really busy and I haven't got time, but know that I read everything for sure. And um, thank you so much for liking this video and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.